that? There That's we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we're recording and I guess we will get started. I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Ann Ball. I'm a program director at Maine Development Foundation overseeing the Maine Downtown Center. And I am here with Sylvie PK, um, who is a program director at the Maine Downtown Center. And we are gonna tag team on this afternoon's presentation. And I know we have um, lots of times for questions. So feel free to type into the chat when I'm speaking and, uh, and when Sylvie's speaking and we'll tag team and get your questions answered. Um, I don't think this will take a full hour, but we do wanna make sure you know we, we'll stay after if somebody has uh, additional questions. Um, you have you are zooming in to the affiliate application information session. So, um, like I said, it'd be great to have you sign in uh, on the chat. Um, anything else to get us started, Sylvie? Before we dive in? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so here we go. And I will say, I know that many of the communities um, have been in our program before. Gorham at one point was an affiliate and Sanford was actually a fully accredited Main Street. So um, for the most part, everything we are saying is relevant to anybody who's been in the program before, um, but there, are, there might be additional information um, during the application process that we'd want you to consider sharing with us. Um, but we can talk about that on an individual basis or um, in, during the meeting. So with that, I'll dive in. Um, just so you see some of our sponsors, um, we do have lots of sponsors statewide and uh, in all neck of corners of the wood that support mm. our work. And today we are going to give um, this basic introduction to the downtown affiliate program, the types of membership and the benefits of being a member of the program, an application timeline, and then we have some additional documents to share. Uh, from communities that have applied successfully. And of course, like I said, uh, time for questions and answers. So um, the first thing to let you know is that the Maine Downtown Center is housed at Maine Development Foundation, which is a nonpartisan statewide public private organization with really a, a broad range of members and partners from all over the state. And we bring leaders together uh, really to uh, work across all sorts of sectors to find common ground to um, approach persistent problems in Maine's economy um, and solve workforce issues and inspire leaders. And then of course, uh, we house the downtown center where a lot of this work comes together, which is kind of good economic research and uh, leadership uh, and really revitalizing downtown. So um, we do lots of things. I'm sure some of you might be alum of Leadership Maine or Institute for Civic Leadership. Um, I'm going to actually be in the fall class of the, the ICL class. So maybe some of you will be in there. But anyway, that's who MDF is. And the downtown center is very logically housed within this organization. So it, it's a, <clears throat> a logical place for us, as we always say. And the Main Street program really began as a demonstration project within the National Trust for Historic Preservation in 1977. It's kind of crazy. Um, how long ago, over 40 years ago. And it really has this kind of comprehensive view of downtown revitalization and historic preservation-based economic development. And it's really the only program like it in the country. Um, and there are over, I'm sorry, I gotta change something on my screen. There we go. Um, over 2000 programs that are main streets or affiliates all over the country. And it's a wonderful program. This slide that you're seeing, that's um, the river between Saco and Biddeford, both Main Street organizations. And on the left, that's downtown Brunswick, also a, a Main Street organization. And here's the map. And a lot of people travel around the country and say, I'm going to a Main Street community because they know those communities value place, historic preservation, they're vibrant, 
They often have a very high number of local businesses. Um, and I know people that literally, they, they think about it when they're traveling around our country. So the downtown center uh, at Maine Development Foundation serves as the coordinating program here in Maine. And really, again, we are focusing on creating places of shared prosperity and equal access uh, to opportunity and really creating welcoming downtowns for all. And we do that through this historic preservation based approach to economic development. And today we're here to talk about our affiliate programs. So uh, we have 14 current main downtown affiliates. Uh, one of them, Woodford's Corner, is actually a neighborhood. It is a neighborhood in Portland. Um, and so that is a possibility. We have uh, Bangor with a number of neighborhoods, um, South Portland with a number of neighborhoods. So um, really, you know, a neighborhood is an approach that works, or I should say the approach works in neighborhoods as well as individual communities. Um, the dates are the dates of these programs that they've come into our program. Um, and uh, I clearly didn't finish the slide and put in the rest, rest of the dates. Um, but as you can see, we are all over the state. And these organizations are some of them are committees within their municipality. That's the way some of them start. And then we have a number of them that are standalone nonprofit organizations, um, Bucksport, Ellsworth, uh, Hollowell, I'm just looking down the list. Monson is a committee actually, Norway is a nonprofit, Rumford is a nonprofit and Woodford's Corner is. So it's about half and half. Uh, our goal really we know from our years of work that a affiliate is more successful if it's outside of city government eventually. It's a great place to start and incubate this type of effort, but ideally um, a downtown revitalization organization comes out of um, the municipal government because they can uh, raise money, right? It's hard for municipal staff to go out and raise money. I mean, sometimes you can, or you write grants, but it's easier sometimes to go to a business or a resident if you are outside of the municipality because sometimes people say, well, I already pay you taxes. Why aren't you doing this? Um, but these organizations really operate on what we often refer to as the three-legged stool. So that means that their funding come from the municipality, even if they're outside of city government or municipal government, the municipality contributes for the long-term to these organizations. Residence is another place where funding comes from. The residents support these organizations and the businesses. And then obviously sometimes grants too come into play. But that three-legged stool finances these organizations and also um, is where your volunteers come from. And you know the work gets done by really having a cross section of all those three groups. So sometimes you have municipal staff that sits on a committee or on the board, um, or you have local businesses in the same situation and then they're volunteering for events. So it really takes those three bodies um, to make these organizations function. And what are they doing at the local level? Some of you have heard it about the four point approach. This is, um, the methodology that has been in place for over 40 years in this type of economic development. And it is, it works. I mean, we have data from our fully accredited main streets with reinvestment statistics, um, number of jobs created, number of uh, downtown revitalization projects. And those are figures that our main streets collect and national collects. And the return on investment is often um, $1 invested to over $20 in uh, return on investment in these communities. So it's a powerful methodology. And these four points are what the affiliates will touch. A main street might have four committees, but an affiliate touches these four points. So don't let this overwhelm you. But um, I'll go to organization. Organization is, is the body that gets the work done. And again, I already talked a little bit about the structure. It could be a committee within a municipality. It could be part of an economic development committee. That's the way a number of communities start. Um, and the organization is where you have the leadership, 
where you plan agendas, you do work plans, you raise money, you recruit volunteers. So it's kind of the, the hub of all the activity. Um, economic vitality is really looking for that diverse economic base and also building relationships with the businesses and also supporting entrepreneurs. We're doing a project right now doing ecosystem building that we have two of our affiliates are involved with it, um, Ellsworth and Holton, and then seven other of our main streets. And we're, we received money through, Sylvia, I hope this isn't on your talking points, I just realized. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, we received congressionally directed spending to do this entrepreneur project. And if it was on Sylvie's slides, she'll get to talk about it some more detail. Sorry about that. No, uh, I might have been mentioned, but. No. Okay. So um, that's about your good um, business mix downtown. And design is like everything from signage to crosswalks, the timing of the lights, uh, connections to trail systems and historic preservation and facade improvements and having clean windows and good design in a window display, all of those aspects. Um, and promotion is bringing people downtown for special events and engaging people to have a reason to come downtown and to stay a little longer um, and maybe have a meal or spend a little bit of money. So that's like the approach. You're looking at all these things within your downtown and it's always based in what does the community want, right? You don't wanna do stuff that the community doesn't want and a good understanding of the market. So you're not gonna really go against either of those. You really need them to align. And then all of these things are measured. Most of our um, affiliates measure things like what's the number of volunteer hours that this effort takes or gets every year. It's a, these are huge numbers, hundreds of hours of volunteer time. And that's a, a powerful figure to share with funders and to um, use in grant applications, all sorts of good reasons. Um, so for one second, I just wanna see, cause that was really fast. If anybody has any questions and feel free to either take yourself off mute or um, let me check and see if the chat. Nope, Nothing we don't have anything chat. in the chat yet. Great. Any questions so far? Okay. So that was just meant to give you an overview of where the main town town center is located. And again, what the approach looks like. Um, and Sylvie's going to, I'm going to hand it over to her and she's going to really dive into what this affiliate program is. And um, I'm sure we'll have questions based on that. So Great. Sylvie, I'm going to turn it over to you and I will start monitoring the chat and you tell me when you want me to advance slides. Okay. You can flip it to the next slide. This is the good stuff, what you're all here for. So the um, we're going to talk about kind of the nuts and bolts of the requirements and as, as well as the benefits of the affiliate member program. And um, then we'll look a little bit more at the process of, of how to get there. And again, type questions in the chat or take yourselves off mute. Um, this is, you know, a small group so we can be, you know, informal. But um, we, every year, we send out to our designated affiliate members a letter of agreement, excuse me, every two years. <laughs> and um, that's something that outlines the different commitments, um, both mostly to us as the state coordinating program, um, and then some opportunities with National Main Street as a part of that. Um, and we look for an annual fee of $750 um, that again, goes to the main downtown center um, for putting on events and offering the technical assistance that, that we'll get to talking about in a moment. And ascending affiliates, you'll notice on this slide, refers to once you've been an affiliate and you've, you know, really got yourselves established uh, along those four points um, and feel like you're ready to start that process of becoming a certified Main Street, that process takes about two years. Um, and that, so we designate the affiliate program or the affiliate member who's working on that process as ascending. And, um, and there's a whole set of other, you know, requirements and commitments um, and benefits that come along with that process, um, along with a lot of coaching from us and our advisory council. And then the goal setting is a process that we go through every three years with our affiliate communities. And really it's a full committee or board exercise, depending on what your organization looks like. And it revolves around looking at 
the kind of organization, um, educational opportunities that we offer, um, gathering data about your downtown and um, project goals and educating and advocating as well as building partnerships with um, your uh, with and around your downtown program. So it's a goal setting that we facilitate um, with with the community, and it's typically a, a more you know intensive session of two or two and a half hours or so. And then um, we look for annual reporting from our affiliate communities. That is pretty basic reporting. Nothing nothing to be scared of. Um, we want to be able to help you all in tracking or our affiliate communities and tracking those volunteer hours, um, tracking um, kind of that snapshot of um, what the organization has been working on. Um, a lot of those points that are part of that um, goal setting process um, and as well as uh, opportunity for feedback and reflections on what you're accomplishing as, as a downtown group. And then we also look for attendance at our annual awards, which is coming up in April for us this year um, and it happens annually. And it's a great event um, along with different trainings that we'll put on um, either through webinars virtually or a couple in-person downtown institutes. Um, so we look at some four, attendance to four of those trainings, um, but we offer a whole, a whole diverse offering of them. And um, we wanted to include some images of our downtown. So this is downtown um, Gardner. And um, this is a photo of a, of a public art project um, that was a, kind of an annual placemaking installation um, with fish painted by local kids that's uh, really celebrating the, um, is it the Cobbacy? Run of the Cobbacy. Run yep. of the Cobbacy. <laughs> So you can switch to the next slide. Awesome. In terms of the benefits, um, we're really, um, oh, sorry, I thought I was flipping something. Um, and we are offering, as I mentioned, trainings and events um, that you all will get either discounted or free registration to um, with both the downtown center. Um, our educational opportunities are free. And then also with NDF, Anne mentioned the leadership opportunities with Institute for Civic Leadership and Leadership Maine. Um, those are discounted for our member communities. And then <clears throat> there are opportunities for board trainings um, and committee trainings um, for that organizational piece, as well as um, we are working on also opportunities for uh, stipends to attend trainings, um, which is available for some of our communities, depending on the region right now. And we also hold some scholarship funds that we will or that will distribute to different affiliate or member communities who are looking for some kind of um, educational or training piece that might be outside of what MDC is offering, but um, we would wanna support you or your board members or a, a paid staff in getting there. And then- um, Oh, yeah. Sylvie, there is, um, Mary did ask, um, are there costs for trainings and annual awards, which you, you did slightly address, but I was just gonna confirm so that everybody knew that um, most of the trainings, we have 45 minute webinars that take place before the workday and at lunch, those are free. Um, our main downtown institute kind of signature three hour training usually has a very modest fee for members just to cover like, you know, coffee and muffins or something. Um, and uh, the MDF annual meeting, you have like a members rate. Um, so we try to make everything for no charge. Our annual awards um, is a larger production uh, and there is a charge, but it's a member's rate again. Um, I think this year, Mary, I think it's $40, um, but anyway, it's it's coming. Um, so we try to keep everything low to no cost. Thanks, Anne, and I think I did, um, I did misspeak there. So thanks for elaborating too. Yeah. And then thanks for jumping in with the question, Mary. Um, in terms of resource sharing, really, this is a, um, you know, as an affiliate member, you're joining this peer to peer statewide network. So <clears throat> we've got optional um, monthly Zoom meetings where folks can come in and come with a question that they might need 
feedback on from their group. Um, we are often bringing in guests or having a discussion topic um, for, for something that's relevant um, with, you know, what's going on with downtown revitalization across the state um, and nationally. And then we do offer a discounted membership to Maine Association of Nonprofits, 20% uh, discount, as well as um, the opportunity for joining the Maine Street America community um, member sharing. And that's a you know national network um, that is not required, but strongly encouraged to join um, to be able to you know connect with other peers who are doing this work across the state. And then um, a big role um, that we play is in technical assistance. So in joining this program, we offer up to 10 hours of technical assistance for each community. Um, and, and that's kind of, you know, when things are going, um, you know, a little more as planned. We also are developing a more kind of rapid response technical assistance um, for some specialized technical assistance when there is either um, you know, some kind of, you know, budgeting or financing issue, or there's some kind of organizational structural change um, you know, transition in leadership has been a big one, especially coming out of um, the pandemic and um, or even a natural disaster, something that needs a little more intensive support. Um, we are there for you on that. And um, and Sylvie, I don't know if it's helpful. I was just going to give an example. Um, Rumford, uh, Envision Rumford is one of our affiliates. They went through a big leadership transition. As Sylvie said, that happens in organizations. And they had a brand new treasurer that had little to no experience with nonprofits um, and understanding how to do the books for a nonprofit organization. So we paired their treasurer with a treasurer from one of our other affiliates, Ellsworth, I believe, with an experienced treasurer, and they became peer-to-peer -peer learning buddies. And um, there was no charge for that, but that was a way for us to really make sure that that organization is getting off on the right foot. So those are the kind of um, rapid response things. We were like, ooh, this is a really acute issue in Rumford right now. We need to help them with that. So we do our best to um, figure out, you know, ways to help the organization with whatever they're dealing with. Thanks, Anne. And then um, additionally, there are initiatives and subgrants that we are um, constantly looking out for. Um, most recently, we received two rounds of a um, bricks and mortar preservation um, program funding and any community in our program was eligible to receive this um, preservation funding, National Park Service preservation funding. And then it, this is where it was, uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem <laughs> was um, through a congressionally dis um, congressionally directed spending um, request and is supporting these different nine communities through 10 initiatives of doing this entrepreneurship kind of ecosystem. So support system work, um, kind of an audit process, and then a um, opportunity for identifying um, opportunities and goals and uh, with some implementation funding to, to go along with it. And so we've got a, a Main Street America's um, Matt Wagner as our consultant, and he travels all over the country doing this work. So we're really being able to bring this, um, you know, his national expertise locally here into Maine through these um, into these 10 communities through these nine initiatives. And that was an opportunity for um, our members, as Anne mentioned, to two affiliate programs participating. And then plus, as an affiliate member, um, uh, the, those communities receive an additional bonus point for um, Maine CDBG um, uh, block grants for downtown revitalization funds. Um, and we know that, that that one point can make a difference. So that's another benefit. All right, you can go to the next slide. Any questions on those benefits? Another option is um, the municipal membership. And so there's the affiliate membership is at one level with those requirements and benefits we just went through. The municipal membership um, is uh, a great starting point for a community that might not have that kind of volunteer led revitalization um, organization yet. Um, it, there's an annual membership fee and access um, to free and discounted trainings again 
and then up to five hours of technical assistance per year. Um, so it, we're, it's a little um, more hands off from MDC, but we're still there to support these efforts and um, always try to help our municipal members um, kind of, it's a good on ramp into then becoming and working towards um, being an affiliate member. Yeah, and Stonington right now um, is a municipal member and they've just reformed their downtown committee. And that's one of the requirements of being an affiliate member. And they are excited to kind of rebuild their downtown program and get that extra point when they apply for downtown revitalization funds. Um, so you can, you know, it, it changes. We know that, we recognize that your organizational structure changes depending upon what's happening in your community. Cool, we can flip to the next slide. So this is uh, the timeline that you may be embarking on. So the number one we took out because it was in a more vertical format and we wanted to make it horizontal, but you're here. Number one was this info <laughs> session, so you made it, check. Um, and then uh, the next steps are really um, submitting the application, which is due October 2nd of this year. So you've got some time to work on that or figure out if it's the right fit for this year. And then what the next stage would be is um, at the end of the year, we would schedule site visits with the communities who are applying um, along with our um, either an MDC staff or an advisory council member. We'd have a small group coming to visit, and that would really be an opportunity for uh, showing off your community. We would have the application already, so we'd know the kind of nuts and bolts on paper, um, but this would be an opportunity to um, let us walk it and see it and learn about, you know, just what makes your community unique. Um, and and at, at in the next couple slides is going to share um, an example of agenda of a site visit so you can see like what that would look like. Um, but we're at that point looking at, you know, the built environment and um, really all four points of that um, four point approach, um, each of those pieces to it. And then um, the next step would be a um, review of those um, applications and the site visits and then sending out um, responses um, to our affiliate applicants um, for those who are going to be newly designated for 2024. And then there's always a coordinated um, communications plan um, that would come next and um, so we would work on that together. And then as a new affiliate community, um, there would be four trainings um, that would be specific to each of those um, four points um, so that your committee, your group, your board who's working on this um, would get a little more in-depth information and education around um, what those four points look like and, and what the, the next steps would be um, in terms of identifying those um, in, a, in a work plan to lay, lay out for the years to come. Are there any questions? <laughs> awesome. Oh. And you came off mute. Did you have anything? Uh, well, I could ask at the end as well. I'm curious if we can get a copy of this slide deck or at least, okay. Um, and okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, we'll absolutely send you the slide deck. Um, and I'm also going to make sure you all get a copy to um, the national conference um, called Main Street Now is going to be in Boston this year. It's usually you have to get on an airplane, but now you just have to get in a car or a train. It's gonna be in Boston. I think it's March 27th to the 29th. Um, and this is pretty exciting. And if you are just trying to get an understanding of um, you know, what more is involved with this program, or you wanna really see uh, or bring other people with you so you can really you know, dive in deep to sessions on placemaking or housing um, or facade improvement programs. I mean, this is the place to come be immersed in Main Street content. And I do want you to um, have that link. And they do have a municipal rate. If you're a municipal employee or elected um, official, you can go um, and have a, a reason it's actually really inexpensive I think it's like $150 so um, it's worth considering so we'll make sure yes and that you not only get the slide deck and all the links but I'm adding that in too <laughs> I love it thank, yeah thank you 
Yep. <laughs> You know, lots of information here. So I think we'll first um, just pull up the call for applications. And um, is any does anyone have any questions? Have you if you had a chance to review that? Um, it's pretty straightforward, but um, let us. This is a good time to ask if you've had a chance to review it or take a look. And I can pop the link in the chat as well. Okay. All right. So um, a few things. Let's see. I'm trying to make our, I don't know, <laughs> Sylvie, I always tell you I have the worst time when I embed links in PowerPoints, but we're going to try it, people. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's coming. It's coming slowly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And super small. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Uh, what are you seeing? You it's seeing? just, oh, there we go. It came to focus. Okay. There it is. So this is this is the application. Um, this is what you need to do. And this is on our website and we will um, send you a link to it. Um, I think these are the actual things that you need to do. You have to identify who is involved in the effort, describe your downtown, photograph it, map it, um, and really describe you know, your organizational structure, a, a possible budget. I would say affiliates coming into our program have budgets anywhere from 7,000 to, you know, 40,000. Like it's really a range for affiliates and that's okay. We don't have expectations that you've done a great deal of fundraising. Um, so we can talk about that. Um, an outline of your fundraising plan, though, like thinking about how you will raise funds um, from those diverse sources. And then I think the big thing with the application is we really want, and, and they're going to, your the advisory council would ask you this at a site visit. They really want to know why do you think this program is good fit for your community? What is this program going to do for you that, you know, you can't get other ways or that it, why is it a good fit at this time? I mean, that's the other thing. Um, some of you, as I said, are in communities that were in our program before. And so why does it make sense now? Um, and I can think of all sorts of reasons, you know, um, from knowing many of your communities and I'm happy to talk about it. So that's the application. It's really straightforward. It takes a committee to think about it and answer the questions. I mean, you don't just want one person to submit the application. Um, it's great to be able to divide it up and say, okay, you're gonna work on photography and mapping and describing our district physically. Um, and then, you know, another group, you're gonna work on outlining like a budget and fundraising process. It's a great way to engage volunteers and also show that uh, wide support. Um, anything else on the application, Sylvie, from your perspective? Um, no, I didn't have anything else noted. Okay. Any questions, questions on that? <clears throat> it's really pretty straightforward. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, I think you heard Sylvie allude mm -hmm. to the fact that, um, can you see the application now? Yep. Okay. That this is a chance for your community to shine and be like, we are the best and here's why. Um, Hollowell came into the program. Uh, you can see it was October of 2018 when we did our site visit, and this was their application. Um, and, you know, they really laid it out. And we will give you copies of these so you can see, you know, who the people are, and they're a business owner or a resident, um, a description of their downtown with um, some photographs. Um, which is great and, and add, you know, what, where it is, the public boat launch, but a thorough application and some public art and their map. Um, and this is always a discussion with affiliates. Well, like, what is the district? How do we decide that? We have business owners that are upset that they're not in the district or, and it's really, that's where, you know, working with us on really defining that core commercial district, historic commercial district, I should say. Like, where's that density of um, both, you know, uh, businesses and historic buildings um, that define, you know, there's absolutely some natural boundaries 
that exist in almost all of your communities. Um, and it's again, you know, you may touch the residential uh, because we all have residents, we want residents downtown, but you're not like entering, you know, the suburbs um, far away outside of your core downtown district. You're focusing on that area. And so the, the mapping process is a discussion and we will work with you and your committee to help figure that out. You also have overlays of bids and TIFs and comprehensive plans and how does all that fit together too? So these are all things to consider. You also have historic districts, many of you. So lots of overlays into what those uh, pieces look like. Um, and here's the vision for uh, Hallowell, which was really great. You know, they really care about arts and culture, pedestrian friendly, um, their history, recreation. And this was great to see verbalized in an application. Not everybody has this level of sophistication. Um, their budget and what it looked like in three years. And as I said, look at the, look how small it is. A revenue of about 5,000. And then in the third year, they were hoping to be up around 14,000. These are small organizations and that is great. And then the commitment letter, which is a requirement. So that is an application. Um, let's see. And this is, I believe, the agenda for a site visit in Ellsworth. Can you guys see that okay? Is it too small? <laughs> um, again, your chance to show off. Typically, the people that come for a site visit are downtown center staff, along with some members of our advisory council. And the advisory council is really um, made up of a cross section of individuals like architects, engineers, planners, small business owners, economic development professionals. And so we try to bring people with expertise that cross those four points that we were talking about earlier. That way, in your downtown, you're going to get that real live feedback from someone who's a design professional or someone who, um, you know, owns a small business and really you know, knows what matters to small businesses. So that's really helpful to be able to have that site visit where you're going to get real time feedback and then you're also going to get a report after the fact. So Ellsworth, when we came, um, as you can see, we did a walking tour. That's also part of the site visit. Um, we had lunch together and talked about Museum in the Streets, which is um, a wonderful history program they have. Um, and then we did more walking tour. Um, we, we toured their innovation center, which is their center for entrepreneurship. And then we provided that real time feedback in the moment of like, hey, you know, this is what we saw. And then uh, the advisory council does produce a report. So it's, it's the community's chance to show off and it's a big part of the application process. And then the last document we have to share with you is hopefully it's going to open. No? No, it looks like it opened the site agenda again. Yeah. This. Okay, maybe we're not going to show that. Oh, nope. Well, somehow we have a goofy <laughs> link in there, so forget that. Um, so the last thing I was going to share, but I am not going to, um, was a copy of the report. So the report that the affiliate receives during the application process is um, for those of you in four main communities. So EJ and um, Devin from Lincoln, when we came and did site mm -hmm. visits as part of the forest opportunity roadmap, we did like a quick overview of kind of some priority areas. Um, this is much more in depth than that. It's a bigger group with more uh, deeper expertise, and it really goes through like the four points, like this is what you could focus on in design. This is what you could focus on um, in promotion and economic vitality. Um, and then sometimes they identify areas that they want more information on. Um, when Monson came into our program just a little over a year ago, we really wanted to know more about their organizational structure. We didn't understand it from their application. And so we said, could you write this up for us? So sometimes there's a little give and take in the application process as well. But it's meant to be a, a very positive experience and it does result in this lovely report. And we will make sure that you get a copy after this meeting.
I just popped a link in the chat for that. Oh, thanks. Thanks. And we'll send it to. Yeah. So um, what um, questions do you all have? Um, and this is downtown Skowhegan, by the way. It's their brew fest, which has turned into one of their big community events. Anne. Thank you. Um, I had just a question. You referenced earlier the comprehensive plan, and yes. we're actively working on updating ours, but admittedly, it's um, you know it's outdated at this point. Is that right. a stumbling block in moving forward with the application? No, it's not at all. I mean, we have uh, all of the communities have many different planning documents that are in various phases of collecting dust on a shelf to actively being updated, um, or they haven't done it yet. I mean, we have communities that have full downtown plans, which is a requirement for communities if they want to apply for downtown revitalization funds through community development block grants. So that's like something that we help and coach and you know work with communities, but there's no requirement that you have a comp plan. That's a state requirement. And again, MDF and the main downtown center are not a state agency. Um, obviously, you want to keep your comp plans um, current for other funding sources, as those of you that are municipal employees can vouch for. But um, it's not a requirement for us. But if you have it and you're updating it and you can be like, well, we just did this vision for the downtown and this is what we've drafted. We'd love to have you share it with us. Other questions or um, thoughts, things that seem hard or impossible? I'm going to just turn off our slides um, so we can see your faces for a couple minutes to wrap up um, and let you know that this is a demonstration project right in downtown Hollowell, down the hill from where our offices are. Uh, they took a little pocket park that had been, well, it was a parking lot that was owned by the municipality and the downtown organization said, we really wanna create a little park. Can we just test it out? Sometimes this is referred to as tactical urbanism or a demonstration project. So they worked um, with the local florist to get those trees and chairs and uh, made a little pocket park. And the good news is in Hollowell, this is actually gonna turn into a real pocket park with uh, real grass and trees planted. Um, so it's kind of a fun project, um, but I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. And Charles, hey. what, what community are you here from? Oh, hey, Charlie. Oh, sorry, you're still on mute. <laughs> Charlie in Farmington and Western. Hello, Maine. Anne. Hello, um, Charlie. It's, uh, I'm uh, Franklin County's economic and community development effort. So we've got, you know, towns I'm thinking of, Jay is a four main community. Yeah. But other than that, it would be any of our towns, Rangeley, Kingfield. Um, yeah. Wilton, perhaps. Certainly Farmington. Yeah. We held one of our statewide downtown conferences in Farmington one year. It's an amazing community. And um and yes, you mentioned four main um, communities, which is a lovely kind of pipeline for communities that are working on mill site redevelopment and looking at their downtowns as assets to when they think about that redevelopment. So we um, spend a lot of time in those communities. Yeah, unfortunately for Jay, they do not control the Otis, the former right. Otis mill site. Yeah, no, Jay is hard. You're right. But I think there's things like, you know, the other part of our mission um, at the downtown center is serving as a resource for downtown revitalization for any community, whether you're formally in our program or not. Um, that doesn't mean we can do as much for you as communities that are formally in the program. In other words, um, there may be things that Jay could glean from this whole approach that, you know, would be helpful. Um, or another community that maybe isn't prepared or ready to kind of take the plunge to be a formal affiliate program. Uh, but there's a lot that you can uh, learn in the meantime um, about the approach and getting organized. And, um, you know, most recently, Sylvie and I went to South Portland and they are like, we don't know if this is for us. And so we went, we talked, we met. Um, and then we did a site visit with some of our advisory council members to look at 
like neighborhood boundaries um, in the Knightsville area. So, you know, there are all sorts of steps and things you can do um, with this approach and with this program. Great. <clears throat> Any other questions? Great. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, really quickly, just to clarify with that Main Street Now event in Boston, do we need to be members in order to attend that? Okay. It's open nope. to. Oh, no, it's definitely open. It's um, one of the biggest conferences I've ever been to. It's over 2,000 people, and it sounds like kind of madness, but it's really wonderful. I mean, just amazing um, plenary speakers, uh, inspirational like awards and networking. It's really, really cool. Um, at first I was a little overwhelmed when I went the first time because people are so excited um, about this work and its impact. But um, it's also, I'm really excited for Maine to maybe um, have more people that can go. Um, and we usually hold a Maine um, reception of some kind. One year we went bowling, you know, we were in like Kansas City and we only had maybe 15 of us there. Um, so I haven't figured out what we're going to do in Boston, but um, yes, we would love to have you um, think about attending. It's, it's well worth it. And you can get on the train in Sanford very easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there are no other questions, Sylvie and I will stay on Zoom and stop recording and are willing to just hang out if anybody wants to pick our brain uh, more individually. Um, we will send a follow-up email with the recording and also um, the handouts that we referenced and the Main Street America link, especially for municipal elected and staff members. Um, and I think that's it. And if you want to have an application, we, I mean, if you want to apply, like let's work with you and figure out what a timeline might look like. I would say you could get an application started now, get it done by October, but you could also be like, it's going to be an, the year after that. Um, we will work with you on whatever timeline makes sense. And Charlie, maybe we should come to Franklin County and to a meeting where you have all your communities um, that might want to think about this. Yeah, I'm going to stick, hang on the call here. And okay, great. Run some stuff by you. Great. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming to the Affiliate Information Center. I'm center.